What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode of How to Get Started Surf Fishing. Today we are going to be going over reels, what you should and shouldn't do with them, and what you should use as far as size is concerned for species that you're targeting. For most surf anglers who are just going to be going out and throwing out shrimp, throwing out maybe cut up, you know, cut bait, something like that, um, I would suggest anywhere from the 4,000 to 6,000 size. Anything bigger than that, you're looking at sharks. Anything shorter than that, you're either looking at artificial or inshore. So first and foremost, this is an Akuma Centara. Um, this is spinning. All oh, you can see, most of my reels here are going to be spinning reels. Um, that's I just got I just got a conventional reel for the surf, but I'm not proficient at it yet, so I don't want to speak on it and give you guys wrong information. This is one of the uh, first good combos that I got. My mom got this for me, and as you can see, it's got its wear and tear. It's got uh, it's got a lot of use on it for sure. But uh, this is a bait runner, and the reason I really like the bait runners is because you flip this little, you cast out, you know, your high low rig, your bottom rig, whatever you want to call it and you flip that switch and it makes your drag super, super loose. All right, you start reeling, something bites, you start reeling, that switch on the bottom flips and your drag is immediately tighter. So these are really nice for beginners because you don't have to sit there and worry about adjusting your drag and then readjusting and then unadjusting and then readjusting. This is an awesome combo to get. Uh, this was a combo, I um, took it off the rod for this video, but uh, if you guys wanna get this combo, you can pick it up at most sporting goods stores, pretty cheap. Um, definitely check it out. You see a little flip at the back. That's what it's for. It's called a bait runner. Um, I like these kind of reels. I use these kind of reels often. Um, so that's what I would use that for. I, species I would target with that. With this size reel, um, I would target target larger fish uh, because that's going to hold a little more line. So I don't have to worry about you know the fish running as much. Or I, I should say I don't have to worry about them running because I have that line capacity. Um, whereas something a little smaller like this, my uh, Daiwa BG. 2500 that I've got here. This is for artificial. You guys recognize this from the last video. This is artificial that I've got here. Um, this is good for inshore and this is also good for casting in the surf with artificial baits. Uh, I've got 10 pound braid on here going to a 15 pound floral leader. Um, that's good because it gives me a lot of castability and I don't have to worry about having super heavy line on here because I'm not expecting something super, super big to take this. That Spanish mackerel was really fun to catch on this rod, but I was able to catch it easily because I have plenty of line. I've got like 300 yards of 10 pound braid on there, so you don't even have to worry about it. Um, a lot of what I see people buy and a lot of what I bought when I was first getting started is these smaller rods, somewhere from the 3,000 to 4,000 size range. This is obviously an older rod. I haven't used this in a while, but um, like this is the Marathon Guardian series that I bought. This is a 4,000 size reel. And these are good rods, but I realized that once I got better at casting, I got longer rods, I got you know more proficient at it, I realized that I was casting most of like my line out. So if something big did happen to bite that rod that had you know this reel on it, it's a pretty good chance I would get spooled. I have a buddy of mine, Tejon, you guys have seen him on the channel before. He, wanted, he had a 6500, I wanna say, 6500 or 5500 size reel. He had braid on it, but he didn't have it completely filled, and something big took it, and I mean, he was spooled in less than a second and a half. We heard it, and that was it. It was done. No more. Um, anything bigger than the 6,000 size range is 6,500, but pretty much 6,000. Anything bigger than this, you're looking at sharks. Um, so if you're interested in getting into shark fishing, you're going to need a larger reel. That's why I have my big Daiwa BG. This is my Daiwa BG 8,000. This is the only size reel that I have in this size. The only reason I have this is for shark. That's why I've got a shark rig on there. This is the only thing I will ever have on there because this is the only thing, that, that's what this combo is specifically for. I got the 8,000 specifically for shark. I've got 300 yards of 40 pound mono backing on here going to 300 yards of 80 pound braid. Um, so this is specifically for shark. Am I gonna throw a high-low rig on this? No, I'm not because it's overkill. I don't need to do it. Could I cast it a country mile? Yeah, easily. I could throw five ounces on that and just wing that sucker out there as hard as I wanted to. But I don't need to do that because that's not what this combo's for. Got water all over these things from when I was rinsing them. But my main point is pick what you wanna choose. So 4,000 to 6,000 size range. It's gonna be your whiting, your redfish, your trout, maybe a bluefish, ladyfish. You guys have seen on my channel what I've caught with the different size reels that I have. Anything smaller than a 4,000, okay, is gonna be your inshore or for artificial because you're not gonna be casting it super long distances. Anything larger than a 6,000 is gonna be your shark stuff. So this is my shark stuff right here. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys. Again, if you have any chance or any questions down in the comments below, let me know. Ezreal's in the cage, he wants out, he wants to go play. But uh, this is a pretty cool, look at this. This is an old vintage reel that I found. Uh, I'm sorry, that my friend found and gave it to me. 
I thought that was pretty cool. It's a Sears, um, Sears uh, style or sealer, Sears uh, real. I don't know. I thought that was really cool. So I'm actually gonna restore this as best I can, clean it up, and uh, put it on my wall. So we're gonna. I'm gonna go play with the dog. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next episode of How to Get Started Surf Fishing.